I'm Gwen Schoen, food writer at the Sacramento Bee, and in the kitchen today is Belinda Greger from Ettore's European Bakery and Restaurant in Sacramento. And Belinda, welcome. Thank you. And Belinda's going to show us how to frost a cake with buttercream frosting. Yep. So, First, you've already filled this. Yes, this is a pre-filled cake that I have ready to go, which is basically once you get the cake out of the pan, you're going to be cutting off the top layer so you don't have that little hump. And that's going to help to achieve a nice, flat, even layer like you'll see when you order one of our cakes in well, our now, bakery. Won't that create crumbs? It does create crumbs, but if you freeze your cake first and mm -hmm. then tort it, that's going to um, yield a much better result and also be easier for you to tort it. Most people think freezing dries out your cake, but if you just take it and let it cool down first before mm -hmm. you put it in the freezer, mm -hmm. wrap it in plastic wrap, and then that's going to help to keep it nice and soft. Oh, okay. So then when you go to cut it off, you don't have nearly as many crumbs going on, but it's kind of a double process. Once you cut it, then you're going to fill it, and the, here we have it filled with uh, white chocolate mousse and a layer of strawberry preserves and then it goes back into the freezer so then here we have it already filled and you can see that it's not fully even here it's a little mm -hmm. crooked here and a little funny on top so in order to fix that what I do is I just take the cake and flip it over pull it off of its little board very carefully and then put it back down and now we have so, a so perfectly that you have the level. flat side yeah up. this is perfectly level now so then you don't have to really adjust for the most part and then once okay. we have it here I'm going to be trimming off just lightly to get it fully set on the sides here. And that's just to even it up so it's really straight. Mm -hmm. And it makes it much easier to ice and see what you're doing. And then if you put plastic wrap down then you can just let the cake fall where it is and you don't get that mess all over your counter. And next we're going to get ready for buttercreaming. And one thing that a lot of people have trouble with is how to buttercream a cake and not get the crumbs in there. So what I find is easiest and most efficient for me when I'm working on my cakes at the bakery is to use a large plastic piping bag. And this is, um, a lot of people use these tips for doing basket weaves. It's pretty much a large basket weave tip. So if we just set it nicely in there and fold back part of your bag to keep your neck clean mm -hmm. and then you kind of cradle it there so then when you go to load your buttercream and I'm working with a Swiss meringue buttercream here that I've lightly dyed pink. Now could you use this technique with any other type of frosting too? Um, stick with the buttercreams for this. If you were to try to do a cream cheese frosting with this it's not going to be very successful because cream cheese has um, a funny body to it, I guess you could say. Okay. It's rather... Uh, this is pretty fluffy. Yeah, this is rather fluffy and it stays put, but where cream cheese mm -hmm. is kind of going to pull against itself. Okay. So you're going to want to stick with the buttercreams on this. From here, we're going to go around the cake. Make sure the cake is centered. And then just lay it on. Just like that. This and is it, sort of like a base coat. Uh, it's pretty much the full coat, really. Uh, there's no need for a crumb coat when you do it this way because you're putting on a pretty nice thick amount and don't worry about thinking oh this is too much buttercream going onto this cake because uh, you're going to be scraping it off to bring it down to a much more palatable level. So then once you get that all on there just run whatever you have left up on top and you can set your little bag aside and then put a little dollop well, little right on top there and then take a I prefer to work with an offset spatula just makes it much easier to mm -hmm. ice I find for me other people prefer a straight spatula but for me offsets the way to go now, an offset means that there's a little yeah the blade is angle offset there. okay from and from the handle instead okay. of being straight across it's brought okay. down and makes it just a little bit easier especially with the larger cakes if you were to try to do a quarter sheet using an offset an offset spatula makes it much easier so then you're going to start pulling some of the buttercream off once you start getting a nice even layer there. Well that's nice and smooth and much faster than mm -hmm. trying to do it a spoonful at a time. Yeah, and then when you go to do the sides, it's going to go right on and you don't have crumbs poking through because you're just smoothing it down onto the cake. Mm -hmm. And you have pretty much the perfect amount on there 
So then you can just slowly start working your way in. And by cutting the cake as I did earlier, mm -hmm. that helps it since it's now inset from the board, mm -hmm. that's giving you about an eighth of an inch roughly of buttercream right there. So mm -hmm. when you feel that you hit the board as you're going around and around, uh, just as I've done right here, I've hit the board right there, mm -hmm. then that means I've got not too much icing on there, just about. So you use that for your measure. Mm -hmm. I do, and if I find that I've taken in the top a bit much, then um, I can always go back and add on a little bit more. So I'll just kind of go around a few swipes here, and then once I get done with that, I go to my next step, which is using a bench scraper. And I picked this little guy up at Williams Sonoma. It sits nice and flush to the table, which makes it nice and easy. So you just apply it to the side of the cake and then bring it right around. Oh, that helps smooth it out really And that's going to make it very smooth. And that'll also let you see where you don't have enough buttercream. So if you have anywhere where there might have been gaps, then you can go back in and fill in. And now you've got all this buttercream here on top. And with that, I try to pick where the lowest spot is, so here, and then I'll just bring it right in, go with it to get the initial top edge off. Nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to check to see how much buttercream, because you think maybe I have too much on there, you just make sure that your palette knife is, for the most part, clean. Dip it down until you hit the cake, and then you can see precisely oh, uh -huh. how much you have right there. So. That looks like a pretty good amount to me, so then I can mm -hmm. just smooth over that. About an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. Just smooth over nicely. And then from here, we're going to refrigerate the cake, or if you want to do it faster, if you need to get it done faster, you can pop it back into the freezer, and that's going to help your buttercream to set and get a little firmer. Okay, so now you've got it all nice and smooth, and you're going to decorate it a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to use um, ganache that I've put in with a star tip and do a nice little shell border down along the bottom. Okay. That's beautiful. Now you're gonna decorate the top a little bit? Yeah, now we're gonna do a top little, um, it's almost gonna look like a little question mark that you're gonna make going around the top edge. So you're gonna go up and around and then go for a reverse. And it creates a really beautiful little scalloped well, that looks like it would take some practice, but... It will, and you can practice on top of um, parchment paper or plastic wrap. So if you want to, you know, do a few run-throughs first, you just kind of go up and around and bring it down. Up and around and bring it down. Well, Belinda, that looks beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you've, you for you've given me. us a lot of really great tips and information. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.